So architectural design principles, controllers, and then commands. Very, very, very interesting. Why the hell do we need this comment? Let's just think a little bit. Let's be pragmatic. Controllers should be responsible for validating data and then dispatch that data to actions. Blah, blah, blue, and bam. What's up, Nuno Nation? It's Nuno here. And just a reminder that only 50% of you are actually subscribers of this channel. So if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe my channel. And now, enjoy the video. What's up, community? And today we are back with some reviewing your code. You guys love this series and I love it too. Apparently, we have a lot of L skeleton to start with. Let's review this one, chat. Let's just jump into this. This is obviously a fresh Laravel project, it is a skeleton, and he included the skeleton word on the project name, which immediately tells me that this is something that is to start a new Laravel app. I go all the way down and I expect to see how to do that. Here we go. Project installation, very good. I immediately know how to get started. I get to see composer install, npm install, environment variables, blah, blah, blue, and bam. This is perfect. We do see as well a few things here which are interesting, kind of how architecturally I expect this project to be built. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Let's read some of this today. So architectural design principles, controllers, and then commands uh, or query patterns. Okay, I think he meant... This is actions, by the way. The action pattern has multiple names out there, and one of them is actually commands. So every single time you see commands or sometimes even command buzz, they actually meant the action pattern. That's it. Seeders, on the traditional sense, in Laravel, they meant to seed the database in the development, locally, just for local purposes, you know what I mean? That's what seeders are about. However, if you actually need production data, things like your very first category or your very first article type, and those things can be dynamic in production, then you probably want to actually move those inserts to a DB table facade and insert them as a regular part in your migrations. You know what I mean? So this is just what I think. Anyways, let's go back to reviewing some code. So this really is actually interesting because it contains some, you know, architectural design principles people probably should use in their projects. Let's, re let's just read this all together. So contor controllers, a thin coordination layer uh, for HTTP requests. Yeah, I kind of like this. Again, controllers should be responsible for validating data thanks to form requests and then dispatch that data to actions just like normal. I don't necessarily agree with spacy Laravel data for DTOs. You know, I've been a lot I've been seeing a lot of people pitching spacy Laravel data for DTOs. I personally don't see the reason why I would use a package for something that simple. You know, I love Spassy, I love Freak, he is one of my biggest friends ever. But personally, using a package for just a DTO, right on the shed, why, why would I do that? Like, right on the shed, if you use Laravel, uh, Laravel data, in why do you think I would use something like that instead of just a regular class uh, with all my DTOs? I get confused, Chad. I just literally get confused, but I don't know. Asan is saying the following, you would use Laravel data from SPASI for strict types, validated data, and optional parameters. Well, you can have all of that in your class constructor. I mean, let's open Laravel data real quick, but uh, I don't think there is anything I would just, I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I'm confused and I don't know. Let's see. Uh, okay. Well, GG. <laughs> <laughs> GG. Now I know what I would why I would use Laravel data immediately. I just read uh generate TypeScript definitions. Okay, well, that's something probably makes sense and is already it's already a reason why I would use Laravel data. Okay, chat. We need definitely or a stream that will dive into Laravel data. Because obviously there is a few things um that are interesting. Okay. Anyways, commands or actions that receive DTOs, which might or may not be from Laravel data, queries for... This is pretty much what I defend on all my streams, okay, apparently. Authorization, I'm not a fan of policies, but I, I get it, you know. Uh, spacy permission for role-based access control. I also build my own uh, airbag, uh, but I do understand why they are using spacy permission. Uh, let's dive into the code itself, okay? Let's dive into the code itself, maybe start with a composer.json to see which set of dependencies are we using on this skeleton. Okay, filament 4 already on this package. So filament 4 came out like literally one week ago, already being used on this project. PHP 8.4, which is the latest version. Um, Laravel data with a bunch of Laravel's 
related passive packages, including permissions, which, you know, doesn't seem too much. I kind of like this, okay? Laravel ID helper, by the way, this is something that if you are not using this already, like what the heck are you even doing? Okay, for PHP Storm development, honestly, this is actually a very good helper. It comes with a bunch of annotations they probably want to reuse in your Laravel packages. Okay, Laravel ID helper, that's awesome. What else? Um, Laravel which is a project of mine. Laravel Boost, which, by the way, in the latest stream, we tried Laravel Boost. It was kind of you know uh, infinite loops, but that's fixed by the PHP Storm team. Collision, PHP Stand, Bracter, all of this looks amazing. It doesn't have browser testing yet, which is something I probably would just add to my default skeleton. Browser testing is something amazing. It's working fantastically. Um, you know, was kind of overwhelming the reaction from people. I love it. Uh, it's probably something I would add here is the browser testing plugin. This is pretty much how I do things, pretty much how Pinkery has its own composer.json setup in terms of uh, tooling. Again, Pint, Rector, PHP Stan, all this modern tooling being used here on this project. That's absolutely awesome. So this is a project from Yemed, which is a full stack developer, freelancer, which is important. The topic around full stack developer is actually an interesting one too. What do you guys think in general about full stack developers? I feel like we may have full stack developers. At Laravel, we do, we do have full stack web developers. In general, to be a full stack web developer, you need to be good at obviously HTML, CSS, JavaScript, be good with React or Livewire, but also at the same time be able to, you know, provision a server uh, using something like Laravel Forge and be able to start a Laravel project from scratch, developed regular Laravel applications. And I don't think it has to be a DevOps, you know what I mean? This is actually good. Probably comes from Boost, okay? But it, it's actually something that I look now all the time, every single time I jump into a new project is, do we have AI rules on this project? And if we do, that means this project is up to date to the latest standards. Again, if you are not using AI in 2025, you probably should. Okay. Sam S is asking the following, how you handle migration squashing when you have data insertion on prod? That's a great question. That's a great question. You literally have to move all these insertions to the very first migration of the squashed um, project. Okay, so the squash project will have basically only the squash SQLite file or squeal file, and then we'll have one single migration to insert the very first data on that project. That's the way it works, you know what I mean? By the way, chat, if you, if you like this kind of content, if you enjoy reviews, just go all the way down and like this video, okay? If you guys enjoy, really enjoy this video, this type of content, be sure to subscribe my channel. I would really appreciate if you guys could do that for me. Click on app to see what we have here. As a skeleton, that's a lot of, you know, opinionated things to have, but I'm okay with it, okay? Again, I probably would name this folder actions, and apparently he is naming this folders commands, and he's calling these action classes just commands, which is okay. The command pattern is actually very similar to the action uh, pattern. Ooh. Okay, here is something that I don't do anymore. I personally don't see a reason why we have these annotations, okay? So again, I still keep this annotation all the way top. However, having annotations for arguments when the typing literally gives you that, there is no reason for this, you know? So here, for example, we have parameter string with a username, which is the user is username, and then I go all the way down and I see exactly that. So in 2025, I feel you guys should just go to this kind of things and just remove these comments. Let me know what you think on the chat. This is just my opinion. I don't see a reason why I would just have a bunch of this. Again, if you are adding value, to the comments, meaning that you are adding things, uh, you know, generic types or generic, um, you know, generic information. You can literally have those, but if you are just copy pasting the same type of type, there is no reason for that. Absolutely no reason. Technically, there is no reason for the comment too. Honestly, you could just remove all of this. Like to be realistic, if you look at today is modern Rust code or modern Go code, or any kind of modern language, they never use comments, like literally. They never use comments on top of functions. And like, this is something that I'm still struggling a little bit because I like to have this small comment all the way top. But at some point, I just have to be realistic with myself and just stop, stop adding them. They don't make any sense, basically. 
Ooh, Adrian is having. Adrian just said the following: comments are a coat smell. Ooh, that's a that's a heavy thing to say, dude. Yeah, undeniably, comments like this one. I mean, not all comments are bad, but comments like this one, they just make the code bigger. You know, this is literally tokens that the AI will have to parse. Probably makes your AI coding a little bit more expensive. By the way, chat. Today I went to the gym. I did some muscle work right there. Don't forget, chat, if you guys spend the day working in your desk, get your ass on the gym every single day. A stronger body means a stronger mind. Don't forget that. That's important for working and be like, you know, super productive. I probably This is probably something that comes from Laravel's posse, I think, or very likely comes from Laravel's posse. But um, Laravel's posse? Like Laravel data, I mean. But typically, my actions... This feels like a DTO, honestly. This is a DTO. This is not an action. This is a DTO, indeed. Let's go here to commands. I'm so confused, Chad. Okay, this is definitely something that feels wrong or weird. This is a DTO, so receives the username, the email. But if I close this, I go to DTO's folder, but I, and I also find another DTO, which undeniably just feels, um, I don't know, confusing. Undeniably here, I'll probably have a single DTOs folder and this commands folder just feels weird in just in general, okay? I don't know, maybe there is uh, something into it, but something I do not understand at least for the moment. An enums folder, let's jump into that. You have a user status. This is very good, chat. I use enums in 2025 PHP code. They are actually very useful. Using p public functions on enums. This is something very important too. You can literally have regular functions in your enums and they will just work. And it's lovely. You can literally just come here and type, I want the active statues. And then you just chain label and you get literally the string responsible for that label. It's lovely. I love it. Also, the color, if you want to, is just beautiful. Beautiful shit. Yeah, I would just make it a little bit clear, like, what is the difference between these two folders, commands and DTOs? Uh, besides that, looks good. That's not a code smell, right, Adrian? Honestly, match statements on enums. Oh yeah, baby. This is this is what I I'm all into this kind of stuff. Match statements on in public functions on enums. Mm, lovely. Joseph is saying comments are good for teams, not to type of comments. Okay. Let's be realistic, Chad. Let's just copy this. Okay. And I'm honestly I'm going against a little bit myself because I also write some of these comments myself. But let's just be realistic. Okay. Let's go here to enums. And let's create all together a user a user status enum.php. Why the hell we need this comment? Let's just think a little bit. Let's be pragmatic and just think a little bit. Like, why the hell we need this comment? We have literally a public function label on the user status enum. Why the hell do we need this? We don't need this, okay? For the team, we, I mean, the, I, I would get this. I don't need this. So realistically, we can just do this, okay? And do this too. We don't need those comments. This one, you might need to, and actually gives you some value. So here, for example, what I would do is this, but I would remove this too. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Okay? No comments. No comments. Let's jump a little bit the filament folder, because we have talked a little bit about filament and the way filament is being used. Let's jump into HTTP controllers and see some of this. So we have the user controller. Oh, this is interesting. So obviously, street types all the way top, make your PHP code strongly typed. That's a very important thing to have, and I'm glad we are seeing that here too. We go all the way down, and we see final and read-only classes. This is something that, you know, it doesn't actually bring too much value, but if the, this guy is using this all the time in every single class he has in his project, I do get it for the sake of consistency. So final read-only classes, I'm okay with that. It's actually something I'm okay with that. Okay. Davy is saying, I hate final classes with, with a passion. Um, so why do you hate final classes? Like, what is the actual problem of final classes? There is no problems, problem at all. And realistically, like, this, let's just think a little bit. Let's copy this. Let's copy this and go to PHP Storm here. It's not, I have actually jumped into some legacy code where I would find stuff like this. Guest user controller extends user controller. I have... <laughs> <laughs> I have jumped into some legacy code that had stuff like this. Honestly, extending controllers is is worse than the red flag. It's probably the worst thing in the entire programming world, extending controllers, okay? Uh, so, I don't know, man. I feel like you kind of you you are kind of making a statement in the sense that okay, people should literally not extend this no matter what. 
And if you just literally add this all the time, maybe people will just not do it, you know? But I have seen crap like this, honestly. I have seen crap like this in the past. On the regular open source project, like on actually open source code, I do like to keep my things final and read-only because the last thing I want is people to hijack my library and accessing some internals and doing some crap. In open source, that happens all the time. I can tell you that. If you enjoy this, car this sort of content, just go all the way down and subscribe my channel, my YouTube channel. And now I'm streaming more than ever. I will have literally six months of work ahead of me just live streaming all the time and just making great content from my YouTube channel. If you like this, just be sure to give me a follow. What else we find here is returning JSON responses, which typically tells me that this is probably just an API. Because a React frontend would use inertia. Inertia would use React server-side com server components, meaning that this is probably just a web API. So let me click here on the Laravel skeleton. Do I find API word? And I do. It's a starting point for building Laravel APIs. Yeah, basically returning JSON in Laravel apps, it's typically something you would only do on APIs because if you are serving React frontends, for example, you would just use Inertia as a protocol between the backend and the frontend. But if you're returning just JSON, it probably means that this is just an API, which is the case. We find models, of course, the user model only which is a filament user is something we have learned literally on the last stream that filament user defines an interface who can access to your lot of, to your filament backend tokens because we have an api those tokens are coming from passport which is important here we go here we go passport being used for being able to communicate with the api fillables which i typically something is something i don't use a lot or n n none actually i don't use filament on laravel uh fillables on laravel models and casts at the very end, which all of them are correct, it seems. Okay, so what is the final review or the final dote for this Laravel skeleton? Honestly, it looks opinionated. It looks general overall, a nine out of 10, I feel. Uh, we get to see as well how some of these controllers are organized in the very organized way too. It's using Laravel data, which is something that literally shapes how you organize your applicator application structure on top of DTOs. So that's awesome too. And yeah, it's using past PHP, all of the modern tooling I love. This is actually good stuff, honestly. Good skeleton here. So congratulations to Ahmed Alzubiadi. Nice to see this project, man. Thank you for submitting this link. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs>